Overwatch 2 has a tendency to find new and exciting ways to absolutely tilt you off the face of the planet and to do so consistently. And two of the things that I see the most often complained about are Force 50-50 and one-sided matches, something that just seems to be so prevalent right now in the community right now. And I think it's really worth talking about. How many of you guys recently, in like the last month, have had a situation where there's series of matches where it felt like Force 50-50? And, and how many of you guys have ever been on like massive loss streaks? How many of you guys have really struggled with serious one-sided matches, either destroying the enemy team or getting destroyed by the enemy team and felt like, man, there's no way that these matches are even. I wanna talk about these because I think that not only are these really important about how you can avoid these situations, how you can improve these situations, but also about how you can kind of process this entire situation and what you can actually do about it moving forward. Now, I wanna talk about Force 50-50 first because I think it's the more interesting one because I think it's a fundamental misunderstanding of exactly what a matchmaker is. A matchmaker is designed to find your true rank and put you into a 50-50 match. Let me give you guys a good analogy. If you were to show up to, as like a nine or a 10 year old kid, uh, at least in North America baseball, there is something when I was a kid called minor league and major league, and they weren't actually major leagues, but when you were 10 or 11 years old, you would show up, you do tryouts for the minor league. If you did really, really bad, they'd put you in the rookie league. If you did really, really good, you'd go in the minor league and these tryouts. And if you started to dominate your rookie season, like I did when I was like 10 years old, they'd bump you up because they're like, oh, maybe you just had a really bad tryout. You're actually really good. You should be playing versus kid pitch now. And the same thing happened when I was 10 or 11 years old. I think I was 11 years old. Again, I had a really bad tryout. There's a consistent theme here. And I was put in minor leagues. I actually didn't even play my first game. Some of my coaches watched me practicing and I was playing really, really well in my practices and they moved me up to the major leagues. And basically the mentality is that you wanna be going for competitive. Competitive is what we want. It's what the entire game mode is called. Competitive is basically saying this should be a struggle to win. We need to be playing versus people of equal skill as you because not only is that the best way to improve, but ultimately that's where people generally have the most fun over a long period of time. If you're getting stomped and if you're stomping unless you're like one of those brain rot people that smurfs all the times it's really not all that fun uh it's really more fun and more satisfying when there's some level of competition i mean that's just the very nature of competition as a whole if people aren't trying to win if there isn't some tension then it's not good and this is where force 50 50 comes into play because the matchmaker tries to find the rank where you're gonna win or lose about 50 percent of your matches unless you improve let me give you a good analogy here if I'm your personal trainer and I'm trying to help you to get stronger, I need to find the weight where it's difficult for you to lift up the weight. That might be a really, really light weight at the start. And then as you start to get better, that weight's gonna get really high. I'm gonna go right past my face cam here and it's getting higher and higher and higher and higher. The problem here is that people don't always recognize that process. If I were to say, hey, let's start by doing uh, a bench press. Let's put on 20, 30 kilos, it's your first time. And can you press the weight up? If you do it, okay, well, then we're going to move on to 25, 30 kilos. Okay, then 30, 35 kilos. And we're going to keep going higher and higher and higher until it gets to be a real struggle or a real question about whether you're going to actually press the weight up. Rinse and repeat. Now, what's going to happen is as you get better over time, what becomes a struggle becomes heavier and heavier and heavier. But the complaint about force 50-50 is equivalent of blaming your personal trainer for struggling with the weight when your personal trainer's entire job is to find a weight that you're going to struggle with. If you feel like you're stuck in Force 50-50, then congratulations, the Overwatch matchmaker has succeeded in helping you find the rank that you actually belong at. But the difference between weight and rank is that rank is very visibly different, at least in terms of bronze versus gold. The ranks look different in terms of the logo, but a lot of times that we're honestly not really smart enough to notice the difference in play. This used to be a big problem way back early in Overwatch. There's a lot of complaints about ELO hell and stuff like that. And I've coached, I mean, I'm, I'm probably 10, 12,000 different students over the years. And I've never, ever seen a student that was more than one rank out of place in terms of like the eye check, right? I've never seen a plat player that looked bronze. I've never seen a bronze player that looked plat and vice, well, I already said vice versa, but basically I've never seen a player that looked woefully out of the rank, even when they were playing really badly or when they were playing really well. The problem is, is that I'm only allowed to notice that because I've coached thousands and thousands of players. The average player is going to go, hey, I'm a silver Reinhardt player. My teammates suck. It's not my fault fault and then you compare them to a platinum tank player you're like oh my gosh you're so much worse but we're not smart enough at that everybody can look at the dumbbell and say this is a bigger number than your number 
so I'm stronger than you. And so I therefore deserve to be struggling with this weight while you're struggling with that weight. We got the 450-50, right? The problem is, is that we're not always very smart at analyzing our own gameplay or really knowing the difference between the level of play, especially with esoteric heroes like Winston or Ryan or Mercy, where it's not always super obvious. Uh, I know I said esoteric with Mercy, but bear with me. Like, it's not super obvious, like, oh, I'm missing my shots, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, you're making bad engages or bad CD usage, or maybe you're not getting as much value as you could, but you may not really know your mistakes. And I think that's where a lot of this victim mentality comes out of because people see a 450-50 and they're not really sure what they're supposed to be doing better. And that's where a lot of educational resources and self-reflection and self thought review and setting small goals can really help. But the TLDR is this. If you feel like you're in force 50-50, you should feel very good about that because the matchmaker has actually found the rank that you belong at. And if you're like, well, I want to get better, well, then you need to not try to win more games. You just need to get good. You need to find what about my gameplay is lacking so that I'm going to win 55% or maybe 60% of my games until I start to win 50%. See, the thing is, is that winning 60% of your games is never going to last infinitely because eventually you're going to rank up, 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 up until the weight gets heavier, heavier. I can't get it 50% of the time. The weight's going to get heavier, and then you have to start from scratch again. And that's how it really goes up until the very, 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 very highest ring. And then things get a little bit weird, but that's a topic for another video. But for the most part, if you're struggling with 50 50 and you want to break that cycle, you just need to get good. And if you don't really mind the 50 50, if you like the competition, then just be happy with where you're at. Nobody says that you have to rank up forever in Overwatch and make it in your entire life. Not everyone's aiming to be pro here. Now, the question is, some of you guys may have been saying is like, it's not 50-50. Some of my matches are super one-sided. Some of them are really not. The matchmaker can't seem to find out where my rank actually is. I feel like I'm playing versus bronzes. I feel like I'm playing with bronzes. And I've got some bad news to you about why forced... Uh, or what forced one-sided matches happen. I did a Twitter thread recently. I'm actually going to use this kind of as a backdrop for, as a talking point here. One-sided matches in Overwatch, a thread, blah, blah, blah. Some insight about why one-sided matches happen. First off, the elf in the room, which is 5v5. More individual responsibility comes at a cost. One bad game from one bad player has a much harsher impact in a 5v5 format than in the 6v6. Think of it as a fewer dice, and the dice roll means you're less likely to get a predictable result. If I roll a dice... I have no idea what it's going to be like. I don't know if it's going to be a one or a six. It could be extremes clearly all over the uh, all over the place. But if I roll a thousand dice, I can pretty much guarantee that's going to be about at one sixth the breakdown all the way through. Agency, in other words, your ability to have impact on the battlefield is a blessing and a curse. And it's a classic example of players not really knowing what they want. Overwatch 1 was plagued with constant complaints on the lack of solo carry potential because you were only 17% of the output. Now you're 20%. This has improved quite literally with over more, uh, an Overwatch 2 with more individual impact and more space to translate impact. But the irony is that by removing a player, you've also opened yourself up to the luck of the draw of having one really bad teammate, one really bad enemy, or even just being bad yourself. And can you guess which one we're more likely to blame? Consistency of output. Now you're thinking about like, why do those bad players exist? If I'm plat playing with plat three players, why does my plat three teammate sometimes play like silver one? Well, bad news. Consistency is easily in the top problems the average player seeks to solve. Sometimes it's insane. Sometimes I play like I bronze. Now, I told you guys this. I've never seen a player play more than one rank outside of their rank. But you know what I have seen? I've seen plat one players play like gold. I have seen GM players play like masters. I've seen diamond players play like plat players. That's just how things go. Sometimes you pop off. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just slept really well. You're tilt sometimes you're tilted. Sometimes you're confident. Sometimes you second guess yourself. Sometimes you know the enemy matchup really well. Like I know how to play Farah versus this character, but I don't know versus that character. And so I look really bad versus that one character, but incredibly good like I'm smurfing versus the other ones. How many of you guys have been accused of being a smurf? How many guys do you feel like you've played versus a smurf? Check the career profile and you're like, wait, what? That person is mine. No way. That, right? That's normal. That's normal. None of us, whether in Overwatch or not, has consistency of output. We have strengths, we have weaknesses, we have bad days, we have good days, we have bad games in good games. We have bad fights in good fights. I have some highlight clips of me on Ana and Zenyatta that make me look like I'm top five, like I'm the greatest ever, and then I miss like three sleep darts in a row in the next fight. Even pro players are victim of this. The real irony here, read this here, is that this complaint more often, I hear this complaint more often with higher ranked students, this is true, professional players, Everyone seeks that mythically perfect consistent output, not realizing that it's impossible. And ironically, fixing on consistency leads to greater inconsistency. You're getting upset or wanting to be, forcing yourself to be consistent can make you be even more inconsistent because you get up in your head. I've made numerous videos on this topic elsewhere. Uh, it, 
check those in the comments. I'll try to remember to post one of those in the description. Uh, we'll move on. However, all you need to know is inconsistency for all players is the norm. And this is exacerbated by something perhaps even more important than your psychology. We'll get to this in a second. But the TLDR is that like everybody's inconsistent. Your teammates are inconsistent. You're inconsistent. The enemy team is inconsistent. And that's just going to lead to inconsistency, especially with fewer players in the battlefield. And even going back to 66 would only slightly alleviate this issue because if you wanted real consistency, you would have to have a thousand versus a thousand. And goodness knows how that would be a total disaster. Uh, and that would come with its own baggage of issues. Uh, but the, the TLDR here is that this is why there are upsets in sports. This is why there's upsets in anything that you play. This is how you win the 1v1, and this is how you lose the 1v1. It's just the nature of humanity. We're not robots. And I think what that can lead us to feel like is that the system has it out for us when it's actually just the sacks of meat playing the system that's out for us. If the system is doing its job, it's just those gosh darn humans that are so inconsistent. Now, what are some other things that can lead to inconsistency? And we'll talk about this one. We've touched on this one already. Map strengths, hero pools, and enemy hero pools are everything in Overwatch 2. I actually think in some ways this has improved a little bit as more heroes have become more dynamic over time. In other words, those characters have like more, uh, like fewer obvious weaknesses, although there are still a lot of examples of that better than Overwatch 1. But a Junkrat OTP just isn't going to perform so well on Watchpoint Gibraltar. And a Sombra one trick may dominate a good ball player, but may suffer versus a good Tracer player who could pursue her after Translocator, and et cetera, et cetera. There's no real way to fix this problem completely. While I'm a huge proponent against hard counters, soft counters and map dynamics will always be a part of Overwatch. And it's the responsibility of the player to adapt your hero pool or play style to the map and the composition. Sadly, that's not very well understood. And even worse, the educational community and general onboarding for the game is incredibly lackluster at teaching play style and hero basics. I can't tell you how many games were thrown by teammates trying to counterpick the heroes they didn't understand. Oh, and the social damage leads to my next crucial point. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm going to counterpick this, I counterpick this, I counterpick this, but they don't know the counterpicks that well. They don't know how to adjust your play style. There's a reason why one tricks work so well, because to rank up as a one trick, you have to learn how to play Junkrat and Afara. Okay, avoid the Farah, go for the back line, play in really short sight lines. Don't take an ego duel unless you see an opportunity. How to min max rip tire. Like you're able to force yourself to kind of solve the problems. And that a lot of us just entirely avoid. And that's why one tricks often do way better than we think that they would, especially characters with obvious weaknesses like Symmetra, Junkrat, Mercy, and so on. You're going to have to learn to make those adjustments whether you're one-tricking or not. And a lot of us don't really recognize that. And worse than that, we only focus on playing versus the enemy composition without considering our team. And then even worse, people don't consider the map. You see, guys, map is the most important thing when it comes to picking what character to play. I'd rather play Widowmaker versus Ball Sombra on Havana than I would play versus, like, I don't know, Cassidy versus that comp, depending on the situation, of course. That's a bit of an extreme example. But let's put it this way. A Widowmaker on Havana would do better versus a Ball Sombra than you think because the map is good for it. But you would never catch me playing Widowmaker on, like, a Lijing Tower Control Center when there's no space to peek at all. And yet people don't understand these things and it really screws them up so you need to consider the map you need to consider the enemy comp you need to consider your comp but more importantly you need to consider those things not just with choosing what hero you play but how you play the hero and what small adjustment that you make and i think people misunderstand this and really don't practice that because it's hard it's hard guys but that so is ranking up that's going to lead to inconsistency of output that's going to lead to uh, hard stops people not understanding the situation we'll keep going here I have coached thousands and thousands of players in Overwatch 2. This is talking about one uh, oversight, one-sided matches. And the people who complain about one-sided matches often have a high correlation with being tilters and either people who get frustrated, angry, or otherwise distracted by the game environment. The loudest yappers are generally the most emotionally unstable people who are going to experience the most one-sided matches because they are the toxic variable. When things are going well, everything's fine and they're a great player. When things are not going well, they're extremely volatile and they play really badly. The irony is that while some inconsistency is unavoidable, the most consistent players are the ones who accept the inconsistency and focus on themselves. People who loudly complain about game quality are usually the ones who contribute the most to their own issue. Shut up, do your job, and go next. Self-sabotage through trying to optimize your teammate's performance is not only moronic, but hinders everyone else's enjoyment of the game and hey streamers, this applies to you too. When you're distracted, you're compromising your ability to aim, your ability to make decisions, and you're hindering your enjoyment of the game. In my experience, this is plagued mostly with ranks in bronze, silver, and gold uh, because they are creating their own prison. You don't improve if you're in bronze and blaming your teammates and yelling at your teammates and feeling like, oh, this is one-sided matches. Leaving, raging, or tilting in games because someone doesn't behave in the manner they want. This continues to higher ranks, but it's not an accident that's bottom heavy. Bad players don't take personal accountability for one-sided matches, and it keeps them bad. So what's to be done? Well, let's talk about that. 
Good news, Wave responds. Uh, they talked about the, uh, some, some system stuff, the way to slightly optimize the system for sure. But eight hours of sleep, eat nutritionally and stay hydrated. Don't abuse caffeine. Um, make sure that you're well rested, emotional stability, consistency and mechanical output from getting good rest and good nutrition. You don't have to eat perfectly. You don't have to be a nutritionist and a perfect athlete. You just need to eat real food and not eat too much and make sure that you're drinking water and getting a decent amount of sleep. For caffeine, caffeine is an excellent stimulant, but it's something that you need to be using uh, within reason and before play sessions, and it should not be ab uh, 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 abusing your sleep time. So you need to make sure that you're taking it at latest seven to eight hours before you go to sleep. Um, and then also, there's also some ways where you should be not using it daily either because your body will build up a tolerance to it. So I recommend taking at least a couple days off from it. But yeah, play at the same time every day if you can. Develop a system of this is the play time, this is training time. Avoid binge play sessions if you're looking for improvement and just playing for hours and hours and hours brainlessly. You're going to lead things to being inconsistent. Pick a hero pool of two to three heroes and stick with it. Learn your hero's play style, strengths, weaknesses, and adjustments versus different compositions and maps. Do not chase counterpicking and counterpicking only. Take a six 60 second break in every queue. Step away from your computer entirely. Do not check Twitter, Facebook, Reddit. Get off Facebook. Wow. Uh, get off away from your computer. Walk around, walk the dog, whatever. Just get up, reset mentally, even if it was a good game, even if you're not tilted. Reset, go back in again. Use voice comms, turn off all text chat, and leave or mute voice if it becomes distracting or toxic. Set small, specific goals for each year you play and change this up at least once a week. Treat ranked like a scrimmage, not a competition play your best and go next. So this is the kind of stuff that you need to be doing to reduce the amount of one-sided matches that you have. And then when those one-sided matches happen, because they will happen, they'll be reducing them, but they're still gonna happen and gonna happen a lot just based off of the structure of people. Who cares? Go next. I know it may not be fun, but that's just an aspect of PvP games. And shocker, guys, this doesn't change outside of Overwatch 2. If you've ever played any other game, one-sided matches are pretty prevalent. And it just goes to show that the inconsistency is our input or other people's input. And neither of them are things that you fully have control over. So long story short, are there issues with Overwatch matchmaking? Are there things that we could be doing better as a system? Absolutely. I think that goes without saying. The question is, is, where is our personal input? Because it's not just that I'm not putting blame on a system and we have to take personal. The reason why we want to take personal responsibility is that that's actually something that you can change. If the system sucks, if the game matchmaker sucks, can't do anything about that. You really only can do control what you can control.